Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Pulse Field Expert. In this video, we will learn to create a dashboard from our sales data. As usual, I will start with the same sales data that I normally use everywhere. This time it is a little updated. Here we have the usual fields. Date, age, gender, country, product category, subcategory, etc. Then we have the quantity column for sales quantity followed by unit cost, unit price, total cost, and total price. Then we have the discount column, followed by sales amount and profit. Total cost is calculated by multiplying unit cost and quantity. Similarly, the total price is calculated by multiplying quantity and unit price. The sales amount is the total price minus the discount. Profit is sales amount minus total cost. We also have a few more tables. The product table, the customer's table, and the salesperson's table. In this example, I will only use the salesperson's table to read the salesperson's name, as our sales table only has the salesperson's ID, but not the name. However, the data set has all the connected tables for you to explore in more ways than discussed here. Data analysis is vastly dependent on pivot tables. In this example, we will use the pivot table extensively. We will use the Power Pivot Excel function. Remember our Power Pivot video? If you don't, maybe you want to pause this video and check out the Power Pivot video first. All right. In the introductory Power Pivot video, we learned how to connect to data tables from a different Excel workbook or file. Here in this example, we have all four data tables in this workbook. Therefore, we will learn to connect our Power Pivot to tables within the same workbook. To open Power Pivot, we will navigate to the Power Pivot menu and click Manage. We can see the Power Pivot has no connected table to it. Let us keep the Power Pivot window aside and check the Power Pivot menu ribbon. Here we have this function, Add to Data Model. I will click that while one of the cells in our target sales table remains selected. Now we can see that the Pivot table is connected to the Sales Data table. I will repeat the same method for all four tables in our Excel workbook and add them to the Pivot table one by one. Now add the customer table. And our last table to add to the power pivot is the salesperson's table. All tables were added to the power pivot. You can verify the connected tables in power pivot, just like the way you would in Excel. Now that all the tables are here, we must create the relationship between these tables using the diagram view. Let us open that. It takes a little time to open this view, especially for the first time. We can see all our four tables are here too. Let's extend the table windows so that we can see all the variables. Relations between tables can be created just by dragging the key field from one table to another. Like here, product ID is the key field for the product master table. I will drag that over the product ID variable in the sales table. Done. We have the one-to-many relation defined. Similarly, customer code can be dragged from the customer master table and dropped over the customer code field in the sales table. Next, I will drag the person ID from the salesperson table and place it over the salesperson ID in the sales table. All relations are now established. If we double-click on any of the relation lines, a new window will open and show the data heads in both the related tables with highlighted relational fields. We are done with the data preparation. In this text file, I have the dashboard plan written. The first data point we want is the total sale amount. Next, we want is count of sales by category in the form of a bar chart. Next. We want the gender distribution as a pie chart. The next chart is a bar chart 
for average unit cost by country. Then we want profit by country bar chart. Then we want a stacked bar chart for sales by year with product category breakup. Next, we want total sales versus total cost over time. This is going to be a time series graph. Up next, we have total profit versus discount over time. This is a time series too. Next, we want a table. Table of sales persons by total sales. Sorted by the total sales. Next is the table of product subcategory by sales and profit. Next is also a table. We have the age column, but we want the age to be grouped by a range of 10 years, like 10 to 19, 20 to 29, etc. We want a table for age group by sales. We need our dashboard to be filtered by date, country, and product category. Let's close the power pivot window first. Here we have the four tables. Let me insert a new sheet here. We want to create the dashboard on this sheet. For that, the grid view of Excel does not look well. Let's open the View tab, and there let's untick the grid lines tick box. Now the sheet has become white. I will select a cell on it and open the Power Pivot by clicking on the Manage function. This will open the Power Pivot. Here we have the Pivot Table drop-down. Under this, we have many items. In this example, we will use the first item, which is a pivot table, and the second item, which is a pivot chart. Basically, the pivot table creates a table and the pivot chart creates a chart. I will click on the pivot table menu item. A dialog box will now ask if I want to create a new worksheet or use the one I am on. I am on the blank sheet I just created for the purpose of dashboard. Therefore, I will use the same worksheet and click OK. This opens the Pivot Table Helper interface. In the table space, I can see all four tables from the Power Pivot. I will expand the Sales table and drag the Sales Amount field to the Value panel. That's it. We have the sum of total sales. This is our first analysis point. I will now open the Power Pivot again, and this time, Define all financial transaction variables as currency, and for some variables, I will remove the number of decimals by clicking on the Decrease Decimal button. This is a step that will show currency with the appropriate currency format. I am done now. As I close the Power Pivot window, I can see the total sales amount is now formatted as currency. I will now insert a timeline for date filtration. This inserts an interactive timeline through which we can filter by year, quarter, month, and days. I will try to arrange these as per my choice. Here in the timeline, I can select the month, as per my choice. The total sale amount is filtered by that selection. Next, I will insert slices from the Pivot Table menu. In the Slicer Selection window, I will select the country and product category as the slicer variables. This will insert two more slicers, one for the country and the other for the product category. Next. I will insert a pivot chart in the same sheet. Drag the gender variable to the pivot axis and drag the sales amount to the value panel. This will create a bar chart for sale by gender. Under the design menu, I will select change chart type and convert the chart to a donut chart. The next one is the pivot chart again. Here we will drag the unit cost to the values. On the value panel, if we use the right click, we get the value field setting. Here we can change the default sum behavior to anything else. For this chart, we will use the average summarization. Unintentionally total cost field was brought to the value panel. I will remove that. We will drag the country variable to the axis, and we have a bar chart of average unit cost by country. We will change the bar type to horizontal bars.
Our next chart is profit by country. By now you must have understood how to create a bar chart. I will quickly create a chart for profit by country with horizontal bars. There are many options for chart formatting and components. They are intuitive and simple. I encourage you to check them out yourself for the best clarity. Next is the sale by year stacked bar chart with product category breakup. This is also similar to previous bar charts. We have the sum of sales in the value and year in the axis. The only difference is, this time we will use the legend box in the pivot chart creation. In the legend box, I will drag the product category. As we do that, each bar will be stacked by the categories of the product. Our next chart is the line chart. This is basically a plot of sales amount or any other summarization of a variable over time. We will start as usual by inserting a pivot chart and selecting variables. In the axis, we will get the date field. That will create a hierarchy of sub-variables, like the year, quarter, month, and day. We will remove the day variable in order to make the graph less jittery. Notice here that we have two different summarization variables in the value box, total cost and total sales amount. Putting them side by side, we can visually see when the company started making a profit. Up next, we have total profit versus discount over time. This is a time series tool. I will not explain this time, as I have already done that for the previous chart. Let me just quickly get this done. I strongly recommend that you guys download the attached Excel file and practice these procedures for the best understanding. We are now done with all the graphs in our list. Next, we want a table. Table of salespersons by total sales. Sorted by the total sales. This time, we will have to use the pivot table feature in place of the pivot chart that we have been using for so long for most visuals. I will add person from the salesperson table and sales amount from the sales table. We can do this because we created the relation between the two tables. On the amount column, I will right click and select sort and then largest to smallest. Now we have the highest performers on the top. I will also select the value column and in the home tab, under conditional formatting, use the data bar option. This will create inline bar charts for each amount, creating a visual comparison between the amounts. In the next pivot table, we are looking for product subcategory by sales and profit. The procedure is simple like the last one. In the value field, we need sales and profit summarized by the sum function. In the axis, we have the product subcategory. Again, sort by the profit. Then add data bars from the conditional format. Now comes the age grouping procedure. To achieve this, I will open the sales table directly. Insert a pivot table from here. In this case, we are actually not using the power pivot, but using the normal pivot feature of Excel. We will insert our pivot table into a new sheet. Drag age to the axis and sales amount to the value section. But now we have a table for all the ages and the sales amount against them. I will right-click on any value in the age column, then click Group. Here we see that our data has aged from 17 to 87. We want groups like 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, etc. To achieve this, I will edit the starting age as 10 and the ending age as 90. Then we have another field named By. As our groups are 10 years old, we will keep this as 10. Click OK and boom. The age is now neatly grouped as we have wanted. We can sort by the sum of the sales amount and use the same conditional formatting to show the data bars. Copy the whole pivot table and paste it into the dashboard sheet. Notice 
that if we filter with our slicer, it works only on the sum of the sale amount. We need to make it active for all the tables and charts. On the slicer, right-click on it. In the context menu, use the report connection function. This opens a new tab. Here we need to enable tick boxes against all the charts and pivots. We do it for all the slices. That's it. We are now done. We can beautify the dashboard a little. And here we are, the dashboard is now ready. We can filter using the slices and timeline. In general, a dashboard is made similarly even on other systems like Power BI or Tableau. If you learn one system, you find it easier to learn another. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to the Pulse Field Expert channel and click the bell icon for notifications. Hope to see you in another such training video soon.